by Prescriptives is an incredible perfume. It was created by Sophia Groisman. It was released in 1986. And it's pretty much the first modern fruity floral. Now, in a time where so many contemporary launches are fruity florals, particularly for perfumes that are targeted at young women, it's hard to imagine how exciting, how different, how unusual Calyx smelled when it first came out. And um, I mean, the thing that you're hit with when you first smell it is this incredibly vivacious, tart, juicy, explosive grapefruit. And that is contrasted with an adorably cartoony, technicolor y, uh, artificial but enjoyable because it's so bright, tropical fruit. And it, it's almost like the the Disney cartoon version of tropical fruit. They're 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 singing, they're dancing, they're they're they have eyeballs. Um, this perfume does not have eyeballs. However, it's adorable. And in the middle of all that jiggery pokery, there's also an incredible dissonance that is supplied by an overripe melon. Now, if you know anything about my personal perfume taste, you will know that too much melon in a fragrance gives me the yak attacks. I just, once I focus on a melon, it's all over for me. I, uh, I can't see anything else in the fragrance. Now, with Calyx, that doesn't, that doesn't happen with me. Thank goodness, that doesn't attack. I don't get the yak attacks. Because the melon is just on the sunshiny side of, of ripeness. It doesn't go into the garbage dump side. And what it does is supply, it, it burnishes, it gives a patina to all the bright juiciness and the technicolor cartooniness and, and gives it um, a little shade. There is a little shade over the proceedings. Now flower-wise, you've got your lily of the valley. There's some spicy lily in there. There's um, jasmine in there. Uh, it's uh, it's got those florals, but really what you're responding to is the kind of snapped green stemminess of it, uh, the freshness, the juiciness of this fragrance. It's, it's green, it's full, there's a little bit of muskiness in there that, that gives it a little uh, physicality. And um, why I always have to make that sound when I'm talking about physicality, I don't know. I don't know who programmed me at the factory, but let's blame them. And it's sweet and it's sour all at the same time. Does all these crazy things. Whenever I smell calyx, I always think of somebody I used to know named Lynn Easton. I met Lynn when I was dancing on the Pet Shop Boys World Tour, and she was their makeup artist. And she was such an interesting person. And she'd she'd worked with Culture Club and Elton John and Bananarama, and she'd you know done makeup for all these these big rock acts and she was a tour dog. Um, she was just spending her life on, on tours. And I just remember that everybody, if she was in the room, you wanted to be near her. If, you know, if there was a party where she was, that's the party you wanted to be at. And she really embodied Calyx for me, not only because she always smelled of it and she smelled fantastic and you always knew where she was backstage when we were in the theaters and the stadiums and everywhere we were on this tour, um, but also it, it's so vivacious like her and she had such a lust for life and that's what I, I smell in Calyx. It's, it's bright, it's happy, uh, it totally embraces life and it's slightly bonkers. I'm Katie Puckrick and I smell. Trisha wears number five, but you don't wear the